we go. There's no title bigger than this. It is great to be back. Welcome to the Worlds. Wow. Just superb. Grit and determination. Does her. Gets it done. What darting entertainment this is. Brilliant, brilliant finishing. And he saves his skin. Pummeling the trebles again. Oh, he's in again. There it is. Nathan Aspel's fired up. Composure and skill. Oh, magnificent from Van Gerwen. He's up there to prove a point. And this time, Peter gets it right. It's all right on the night at the Alexandra Palace. Hello and welcome to On The Wire. It is day six of the William Hill World Darts Championship. I'm Dan Dawson. This is Magic Murph, Chris Murphy, who uh, was commentating on the tournament last night in TalkSport 2, weren't you? you enjoy it? Yeah, it always been said that I've got a face for radio, Dan, so I enjoyed it. I'm sure that people were happy. It was just on radio, not on TV. Absolutely delighted. Look, um, we're going to talk about tonight's action, but let's talk about what happened yesterday, because I think the tournament really heated up yesterday. We started with Steve Lennon seeing off the Swede, Daniel Larson. Uh, he's not had much luck in previous years at the World Championship, Steve Lennon, but he's pretty impressive the way he closed that out. Yeah, he said he was determined not to let it go down to a last, leg, uh, last set decider, having lost plenty of those in recent years. So very well done from Steve Lennon. Uh, there was a determination to take the next game to a last set decider because we played every single dart of this incredible game between Scott Waits and Matt Campbell. What a player the Canadian is, but Scott Waits, we've waited so long to see him on this stage and he delivered. Yeah, 2-0 down in that deciding set as well, Scott Waits, but won the last three legs and 11 dart to win it as well. He certainly did deliver. And he said, like me, he's a Yorkshireman and he likes to get his money's worth, gave everybody their money's worth yesterday. A really, really impressive, incredible iron ring finishing from Scott Waits. And look at the reaction from him there. Scotty Too Hotty, the former Grand Slam champion. Uh, this, well, Di Zhuang, I mean, he was a spectator in most of this game because Kim Hybrex, a very, very good performance of the tournament thus far when Kim went and won that 3-0. Yeah, the only spectator we've had since the first day of this tournament, <laughs> but Kim Hybrex was fantastic, won every leg. Uh, really just coasted through but very very impressive and we've seen this from Kim before haven't we a really good first performance in a TV tournament and been unable to follow up with the second so it'll be interesting to see if he managed to do that this time and then everybody's favorite the most watchable man in darts Mervyn King he won it 3-1 there were little he was the better player throughout wasn't he particularly at the start against Max Hop but there were little moments where Max might have been able to force an opening. Yeah, and because it's Mervyn King, you think that he could become embroiled in a battle. But again, he did very, very well, similar to what we saw from Steve Lennon earlier on in just closing the match out and a match for Mervyn King that for once had little drama. Well, look, uh, we're moving on to the evening session from, from last night and it was where we got to see Michael Van Gerwen, but he was last up. Uh, we started with Nico Kurtz, who is very impressive, perhaps not as good as we've seen from him in the past, but he got the job done against Andy Hamilton, who never really got going, did he? Yeah, let's be honest, it wasn't the greatest game, was it? Andy Hamilton just, yeah, didn't seem to get going. He's been showing signs of a return to form that didn't happen at all for him last night. Peter Hedman, I was getting really worried for her, and then she won the third set 3-0. I thought there, were, there, well, there could be something magical happening, but Andy Bolton, a bit like Steve Lennon, a bit like Mervyn King, closed it out. She had a 180 in the first leg and then missed six starts to win, and I think it took her two sets to recover from that. But when she kind of relaxed, she won that set, but Bolton, yeah, just did a job, really. What a game. What a game. Damon Hetter, Danny Baggish. Match dart, double-double finish, can't take it out. It's actually the leg before this, wasn't it, that was the real dramatic one. They're walking up and down the runway, about 30 feet away from the board at times. They just could not deal with it as they missed dart after dart after dart. Yeah, that new walkway really came into its own, didn't it, during <laughs> that? The drama was unbelievable. Had there been normal circumstances, they would have been in the 10th row of the crowd while their opponent was going for the double, but it was the most dramatic match. And Baggish getting the job done, Hetter will be very disappointed to be heading home. Yeah, a lot of people fancied Damon Hetter for a run. I was certainly one of them, but Danny Baggish, fair play, produced another win. Uh, and Michael Van Gerwen. Ryan Murray played really, really well in this game, but I just got the fit. It was like he was setting the pace for Van Gerwen. It was like the ideal situation for MVG to come out and lay down a marker. All he did was jimmy him along to produce the highest average you've seen in the tournament, up at the sort of 109 mark. He says he's back now. Pretty convincing. Yeah, yeah, it's a higher average than what he had in the first round a few years ago when he had that record-breaking tournament. Um, I think you're right about Ryan Murray. He gave Michael Van Gerwen the game that he probably wanted and needed. Could have 
been similar to that Rennie Idrams match a couple of years ago when Murray missed darts to take it to a final set. But yeah, Van Gogh really, really on top form and the rest of the field must be looking thinking, oh dear. <laughs> oh dear, indeed. Well, look, that shows you the kind of thing we're seeing now. We're starting to see some of the big players step it up slightly. Kim Hybrex at that 104 average, Michael Van Gogh and of course at the 109. We're still seeing some shocks with the likes of Danny Baggish. Um, let's take a look at tonight's action. So if we bring up the schedule for us, come man behind, man behind the screen with his magic finger. Now, you can only see three games there because the very, very disappointing news is that we've had to see Martijn Kleermacher pull out of the tournament. And the Dutch Giants had an excellent first year in PDC darts. He was set to make his debut at this year's William Hill World Championship. But we've got very strict testing and isolating procedures in place. And we even have fallback plans if anybody falls foul of those. And, and that's not worked either, has it? So we're, we're missing a player. Yeah, Josh Payne was the intended replacement for Kleermacher after he tested positive for coronavirus. But Payne had come into close contact with somebody who, uh, who tested positive, so he's unable to play. Uh, very, very disappointed for Martijn, as you say, having done really well to qualify for this. It must be very, very strange emotions going on for Josh Payne, having got uh, another chance and then snatched away from him immediately. Very, very sad, but um, it was probably going to happen at some point to someone unfortunate for those players. Well, look, we've seen it happen with Adrian Lewis and Stephen Bunting already this year. That was when Simon Whitlock managed to sneak into the World Grand Prix and go on that incredible run. It does mean that Cameron Carollison, the South African qualifier, uh, goes through to the second round. But let's have a look at what we do have here. Keegan Brown, uh, he takes on Ryan Meikle. The barber Ryan Meikle who's here via his development tour exploits. But when we've seen him play on the tour this year, he's been really good, hasn't he? Like He's throwing some big averages. Yeah, I think there are three really good matches this evening. Mm. And I think that could be fantastic if the pair of them get going. I'm not sure where Keegan Brown's game is right now. He's spent a lot of time working the show of course works for the NHS um, and I'm not sure how much practice he'll have been having going into this tournament. Ryan Meikle certainly on his day can can live with the, the match against Peter Wright was absolutely superb. Yeah, Players' Championship Finals uh, very recently where they both averaged way over a time. It was 105 he lost, yeah, something around that. Uh, now then, I think that is going to be brilliant. I think this is going to be Ryan Searle versus Danny Lawby part two because Jeffrey Desvan and Ryan Searle are going to be very, very quick. We know Ryan Searle's going to be good. We think Jeffrey Desvan's working his way back to top form. He is a seeded player and he's a former semi finalist at the World Match Play. Do you think Jeffrey's ready to get back to that amazing standard that we know he can produce? Uh, yeah, not too sure. I think. Um we saw, was it last year when he faced Rob Cross or the year before and everyone thought he was going to beat Rob Cross and then Cross put in a brilliant performance. So did Jeffrey, to yeah. be fair. Um, but I think, again, he's got a very tricky opponent in Ryan So I would probably give the edge to in this match just based on what we've seen over the last 12 months. As we said, three matches tonight and they all could be very, very quick as well. We could be on for a very early finish, even if they all go the distance. Well, look, John Henderson, we have seen him already so far this year's William Hillwood Championship. He played Marco Cantler. Now, it was a very, very laboured struggle from Hendo. It was a, a bit of a mess of a display. He put that down to first round nerves and he knows he's going to have to be better against Johnny Clayton, who, of course, is a World Cup winner this year. He is. Johnny Clayton will average 105 or 85. If it's 105, <laughs> he wins. If it's 85, then he's going to have a game on his hands from John Henderson who as you said knows he needs to improve to take on the Welshman. The interesting thing for Clayton is that when he does start well he usually carries on in that vein so we can probably take a lot from the performance that he puts in tonight if he does indeed go through and make it to the third round. Yeah and the same little section of the draw as mighty Michael Van Gerwen who has we've heard has laid down a marker did so last night well Johnny Clayton he is the highest ranked player you're going to see in action uh, this evening the ferret uh, we got him playing forfeit darts take a look at the ferret he's, doing, he's going to be playing normal darts this evening or if he isn't then John Henderson's probably in for a treat Johnny right. dear chappy you need to throw left hand you are right handed obviously I am so you need to throw left handed right. the target 221 uh, you stay away from the board because I'm not very safe in left hand. Speak 67, John. Here we go. 10. Oh. Oh. 31. Oh. 45. Oh, 4. Yeah. 22. Oh, 22. Oh, so we've got a little bit of a drum roll here, really. You're on uh, 67, you need 150. Four to tie. 
Oh, man. Five of them. Six. Six of them. Fucking hell, Come on, lads. So, our final total for you, Johnny, is 78. 